welcome back to my channel. This week I have a special guest, my dad. <laughs> uh, and this week we're going to be making bacala mantecato. Yes, and before we get started, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up so that way we can keep on growing. So we usually make this recipe around the holidays, and that was the first time that I had it. It was when we made it together around Christmas time. But when was the first time that you had this? So the first time I had bacala mantecato was in Venice about three years ago, I believe. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and I absolutely fell in love with it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a staple that they have in the bars or the small cafes Mm -hmm. um, in Venice and they serve these small portions of food that they call chiquetti and one of them that they quite often served was bacala mantecato. Oh yes. Yeah so after you went to Venice you came back and you were telling me about it and we were like we need to figure out how to make it and exactly. now we have perfected it and we are bringing <laughs> you the recipe. <laughs> so the first step is to make sure that your bacala is soaked long enough. So what does that Be mean? Well because the bacala comes salted mm -hmm. it's like dried and salted so it uh, preserves it, preserves it, it, preserves it and yeah. helps it keep. You can literally buy the bacala like that and keep it for a long time yeah. at room temperature mm -hmm. without having to do anything with it. But once you want to use it, you actually have to soak it in water mm -hmm. to help remove that salt yeah. and that salty flavor from it so that you can eat it. Yeah. Um, well, usually, you, could, you could technically eat it. At, it's just really you salty. Could. It's, it's edible, salty. but it's very but once, salty. Because the salt yeah. just, once the salt is applied after however many times, once it gets to the grocery store where we get it, it's it's edible. It's exactly. It's just, it just, the salt helps. Um, yeah, it's kind helps. of, it's kind of cured with yeah, the salt. Yeah, so, it's so you can yeah. eat it that way, but mm -hmm. normally you would, you would soak it and cook yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, and usually you'll soak it in water for two to three days. Yeah. Um, change the water twice a day. And then also rinse it when you change it. Yes. Each yeah. time you each time you change the water, I would rinse it off in the sink, mm -hmm. fill the fill the container back up with water again, put it in the refrigerator, and then about every like eight to twelve hours, change the water. Yeah. So when you do change the water, you can taste it to assess like how salty it is. Um, but if you don't taste it during any of those two to three days, you definitely want to make sure you kind of take a little piece and taste it before, yeah, before you make this you recipe. Use it. Yeah, yeah, just before in you actually case it's it. extra salty. Yeah, and then that way you can also know um, if you need any salt in the recipe because then you might want to just omit any additional salt if it is too salty. Um, but yeah, so exactly. that's that's the first step. That's what you have to make sure you do before you even start making. <laughs> Bacala mantecato. As you can tell, my dad's gonna be the only one to say that this whole video. <laughs> I can only say bacala. <laughs> okay, now how do you actually? We'll try it now. So bacala. 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 Mantecato. 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 Good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm learning. <laughs> so in order to make the recipe, we're going to need some ingredients. And what are we gonna need? Well, we need the bacala. Yes. Usually, we'll bacala come in, you know, like whole sections of yeah, like one, like one big fish. Giant fish. <laughs> Generally it's right around two pounds mm -hmm. on one of those. So that's usually what we'll use to make the recipe. Is yeah. That one one two pound serving of yeah. bacala. Um, and then the parsley. We always have fresh need, parsley. Need fresh parsley, pepper, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of salt depending on how the recipe goes. Yeah. Um, olive oil. Um, and the olive oil could really change the recipe depending on the type of olive oil that you use. So you yes. want an olive oil that you really like and enjoy the flavor of. Mm -hmm. um, bay leaves, we'll need those. And, and garlic. Garlic. Um, garlic. And, and lemon. The last one is lemon. lemon. Yes, lemon. Yes. Um, yeah, so the amount of garlic um, is kind of pre preference, I would say. We, I would say so. Yeah, we put a lot of garlic in ours. However, um, if your fish happens to be a little less than two pounds, you might want to put a little bit less garlic um, if it happens to be yeah, overpowered. You can adjust it to you your can, flavor you or how much you like the, the garlic mm -hmm. flavor in there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing that you will need uh, is cooled water. Yes. Yes, you'll need uh, some water on hand. Easy to get, obviously, but <laughs> you definitely will need it, so you want to make sure you have it on hand when you're collecting all of your ingredients. Now, to get started, we're actually going to move over to the stove. So you want to grab a large saute pan with tall sides, and you're going to put all of your ingredients in it. So, yeah, so basically the bacala, after it's drained mm -hmm. and rinsed off, will go right into the pan. Mm -hmm. um, you'll add in some sliced lemons. Yep. Uh, a couple... Which Actually, with the lemons, um, you did we sque squeeze them. I did squeeze a little yeah. bit of the juice in there too. Yeah. You know, the juice will get mixed up into yeah. it. But, but just but squeeze yeah. the lemon slices and then put them flat in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that'll go into the pan with the bacala. Mm -hmm. um, you can grate a little bit of pepper on top of the on top of it. Um, take a couple cloves of cloves of garlic and just. Um, dice them up. Yeah. And, or slice them. Yeah, dice or slice. Slice them fine. and slice and, and put that in the pan with mm -hmm. it. Um, two bay leaves and then cover it all with water 
and turn it up till it comes to a boil. Yeah. And so we turned ours just to kind of like a light boil. Just it doesn't light have boil. to be like your yep. boiling pasta. Uh, and then once you kind of start to see some bubbles, you want to bring it down to a simmer and it'll cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. And you and you really have to watch it. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I, 10 to 15 may even be too long for it. If, yeah. you, if you kind of see that it's kind of like stiffening up or getting too tight, you don't want it to get tough on you. Yeah. Okay. So five to 10 minutes may be enough, but you really yeah. have to watch it and just determine if, you know, if you think it's done. I think the biggest way to, to kind of tell is how thick the fish is. The thinner mm -hmm. the fish is, or, uh, is the uh, quicker it's going to cook. I know in years past, we have taken out thin, thinner pieces earlier, just because we were worried and they weren't the cooking. thicker ones in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just watch it, but try not overcook it. Okay, so now everything should be cooked mm -hmm. once you've brought it up to boil in 10-15 minutes, about that time. And then we want to make sure that we reserve some of the cooking water. Yeah. So, I usually take like a, a, a measuring like a, cup, yeah, like, like a, a glass Pyrex. measuring cup, yeah. Pyrex, fill it with water. You're really only going to need a small amount. Yeah, you know, but I we know, always... I, just, I always fill it for yeah, some we always reason, fill extra. just in case you need extra yeah. later on. And it doesn't matter if like any of the lemons or the bay leaves or anything get in it. We're only going to use the water the loader, water. but it doesn't matter if that happens. So just don't forget to do that first. Yes. And you, then you can drain it. Yeah, and then we'll we'll drain the bacala. It'll um, go, go into a strainer mm -hmm. or a school of pasta. School of pasta. And and you'll drain it in there. Yeah. Um, let it just drain out. And yeah. And then we'll take the bacala out. You you don't you'll reserve. You don't need the lemons at this point. Yeah. You don't, you don't need any of the other. ingredients. You don't need any of the other ingredients. Mm -hmm. If some of the garlic comes out with it, that's perfectly fine because it'll yeah. just get mixed in with the bacala. But mm -hmm. you'll basically take it all out and put it into a bowl. Yep. Yep. So you just move it from the saute pan into a bowl, and then it's gonna go ahead and cool. Uh, so the temperature should come down to at least room temperature before you start mixing, uh, because you don't want any of the other ingredients you're adding to actually cook when you're. Uh, emulsifying it all so then once once the fish is in the bowl and it cools to you know to room temperature you actually need to break it up then into smaller pieces um, and mm -hmm. as you can see we're kind of a, using a combination of our hands and our cooking scissors mm -hmm. which if you've seen G's videos you know we <laughs> love our, our kitchen scissors <laughs> So just break it up into small pieces and then you'll be all set to go for the next step. Yeah. Yeah. So from a few years of making it, it kind of just helps the like emulsion come quicker. That's mm -hmm. really the main point. We have tried doing it with the bigger pieces, but we inevitably it, ended up it breaking. It just speeds it up. Just it just makes speeds it, up makes the it process. so much simpler yeah. to break it up. Exactly. So now we're just going to add the rest of the ingredients into the bowl and we're going to be mixing it with an immersion blender but we can do this by hand. And so, so traditionally, that's what uh, bacala montacato was mm -hmm. made by hand. Um, montacato means whipped or creamed. And so it refers to, they would use, it would use like a wooden spoon mm -hmm. and actually turn it and turn it and turn it. It would actually take a really long time for them to make it, maybe an hour or two to actually get it to a creamed version. But we kind of discovered the immersion <laughs> blender and uh, it, it works a lot quicker. And all yeah, that, you yeah. Know, it works very well. Yeah, it's kind of like mortal pestle versus like a food <laughs> processor. Yes. You know, it's yeah. It's, so you can use a food processor or oh, blender. Oh yeah, you but, could use those, but you we you know, but they sometimes they might overmix it. It might yeah. not really come right. So we did find that the immersion blender kind of is like a nice in between. Yeah, 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 yeah. The immersion blender definitely gives you more control over it, and it definitely mimics the idea of like actually whipping it with your hand uh, a lot closer than if you were just doing it in a blender or a, a food processor. So we're gonna start with just putting some of the cooking water into the bowl with a bacala. And keep in mind that all of our measurements are kind of based on what the fish needs, but from years of doing it, we have all of our usual measurements listed down below. But you'll see in the video that, you know, when we, we add the olive oil, we're really just like visually adding it. Um, if you've ever been in an Italian kitchen, that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> but we have, um, we have like measured out what we usually do. So listed down below for that. So what we do is once the buckle is in the bowl, after a little bit, so we'll um, take the garlic cloves um, and we have the amounts below, as we said, and just press, use a garlic press, put that into the bowl with it, with the little bit of water that was reserved from the pan and start using the immersion blender um, to cream it. Mm -hmm. And just a few seconds after you start the immersion blender, you can start um, pouring your olive oil in mm -hmm. and mixing it all together. 
Um, and just as you see the consistency starting to come together, it kind of wants to look a little mayonnaise-y yeah. kind of consistency. It's kind of like what you're almost making. Yeah, you're almost making like a mayonnaise out of the fish. Yeah, yeah. Because, for, I mean, that's much. like, you know, yeah. an oil and egg is just what makes mayonnaise. So the fish is just replacing the egg almost. <laughs> right. And then the only other thing that we kind of add at this point is one tablespoon of cool water. Mm -hmm. um, you may need to add a little bit more, um, but just do one tablespoon at a time until you see how the consistency starts to come together. Together. Yeah. You just keep doing the immersion blender until you get that nice consistency that you like. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we won't add any more of the reserved water is because that water is actually really salty and really packed with flavor. So if you add too much of that, it could overpower right. everything in Correct. the whole dish. Um, but yeah, so you know, we've got our garlic, we've got our oil, we've got everything all mixed in there. And once we get to that cream consistency that we're looking for, which honestly is pretty visual because everything is going to taste similar once all of the ingredients are together and you're going for mm -hmm. texture at this point um, we've never found that we were able to over whip it um, but just make sure you taste as you go just to make sure that mm -hmm. everything is is the way that you're looking for okay so you also want to make sure that you add the pepper when you're emulsifying everything i don't think that we had said that before but once you have everything all mixed together, then you can put your immersion blender aside and we're gonna start mixing the final ingredients by hand. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take some lemon juice and some parsley and we're gonna mix that in and then you wanna taste it and see if you need to add any salt and... Just mix the salt and you're good to go. And that's it, that is it, that's the final step. Okay. Here we have it. <laughs> um, so oh, we, yummy. yeah, I know. <laughs> we already had some. It was very good. But <laughs> but we have um, we have it served here, and we're gonna taste it on camera for everybody. So I want you to show up how we have it. So we have it on crostinis. It's just like crusty bread. So you can either serve it on a uh, crostini or like just like a baguette that's crusty. We've had it on soft bread, mm -hmm. but I think the real preference is on like a nice crisp bread. Absolutely. Uh, so, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try it. Wow. That was good. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was one of my favorite I think we've made over the past <laughs> few years. Gets it's, better every year. It does get better every year. That's true. This is one of those recipes that the more you make it, the better you get at it. Because you don't even like today, we were, you know, we were filming it and we were recording it and we just knew when it was done. Mm -hmm. We did. We, he was just like, it's done. I'm like, you're right. It looks done to me. <laughs> and we took it off the heat. Um, but you know, you get that, you learn that with time, which is one of the good things about Italian recipes, I think in general. Absolutely. <laughs> So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up so that way we can keep on growing. And let me know in the comments below what you make with bacala and double thumbs up if you want to see more videos with my dad. <laughs> Ready? Bon Natale! Bon Natale. Bye! Bye. <laughs> that was my mom off camera. <laughs>